Hello everybody, welcome to my channel or welcome back to it. If you're not familiar with who I am or what I do, I am a Detroit-based uh, photographer and model and I've had a few requests to start making just tutorials of how I do my own makeup. A lot of the times for shoots, especially in the last six months, um, but almost all of them I just do my own makeup mostly because I'm most familiar with myself. Uh, but also because I really like to do it. So today we're going to go through and do like a quick like gold gradient, add some rhinestones to the eye look just to kind of jazz things up a little bit. Um, for the month of September I've been doing like beauty session, mini sessions, so I do uh, three high-end retouched photos for anybody that books these sessions and the best way to practice when I don't have a backlog of these photos which I will in the next coming weeks is to take them of myself. So today I'm just going to run through how I create that look. It's all super easy. Um, I'm very strange with my money so I I spend a lot of money on things for my camera and I spend a lot of money on classes to take to learn more about photography and makeup and all those things but I don't necessarily love spending a ton of money on products so some of the stuff you'll see today is you know definitely definitely budget items some of the other things are a little bit higher end but that's mostly due to my sister who works at Sephora so she kind of tells me all the good things to get or uh, if she's there I just feel pressured to get better things than I normally would so really quick before we get started one thing I would like to point out is that normal people do have skin problems um, I'm not somebody that wears makeup every day I am not somebody that drinks excessively, really smokes excessively, eats super unhealthily, but I also don't eat super healthy. I try to drink as much water as possible, but I'm also now in a situation so much where I'm wearing a mask eight hours a day. So just to be clear with everybody, and especially if you follow me on Instagram or seen some of my Instagram posts lately, um, my main focus is photography. I am working on becoming a better retoucher, so that's a lot of what I do and spend my time on. And that's the main reason that I'm even doing this. So before anybody's like, well, you look fake because your skin has acne on it. It's like, well, yeah, but the point of what I'm trying to do is to learn how to work around that for high-end beauty retouching. So just as a heads up, these problems exist for all makeup artists. These problems exist for all beauty bloggers. So the first thing I'm going to do, well, not makeup related, is put my hair back because I have so much of it. I also have this like bug bite on my arm that's just like so itchy so I'm so sorry if you just hear like the dry scratching of me scratching my own skin. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, start with a primer. I usually start with a primer just to kind of get some moisture on my face. I always start with the eyes before I put on foundation so that way I don't mess up the foundation or concealer or whatever. So this is just the um, Fenty Beauty Pro Filter uh, primer. I got a trial, a trial or travel size from Sephora. I think it was like $13. Definitely not super expensive and um, I think it works kind of nice. It's not too heavy which I like because I have skin that's pretty sensitive to product so anything that's super super heavy kind of just like doesn't doesn't work out and then whenever I rub anything into my face it looks like my skin's on fire so great. Oh, I wa oh, yeah, I always wash my hands and everything too before I get started, so make sure to do that. I do a lot of stuff with my hands and my fingers. Um, like I said, I don't use a ton of like professional utensils, but I feel that I do know what I'm doing. So the first thing we're going to start with is the eyes, like I said. I always like to put concealer onto my lids just so that way the eyeshadow stays nice and pigmented because nine and a half times out of ten, I'm moving from this to go shoot something in my studio right over there. And so I want to I want it to last for as long as possible, which I feel like is the case for most makeup stuff. So the concealer I use oh so the concealer I use for uh, my eyeshadow again is another travel size, just um, little mini that I got at Sephora. Again, this is probably like thirteen to fifteen dollars. It's Nars. Um, it's their concealer in vanilla, and I just use a little dot on either eye just to kind of give something for the shadow to stick to. After I put the concealer, just a couple dots on, I actually use a flat brush to spread it out. You can use your fingers, you can use like a beauty blender. This is just what I like to use. So to start, what we're going to use is the Ulta Beauty Endless Eye Palette. I'm pretty sure I literally got this like on a holiday sale for like $10. Um, it is a little bit like dirty and cracked, so nobody judge me. 
but um, great palette, great color, um, color range, which I really like, especially because I do my own models makeup a lot of the times too. And um, I can't just do them the same that I would do mine. So to start, what we're gonna start with here, and these don't have any names, so I'm just gonna have to point at them. Um, but we're gonna start with like a pretty, so we're gonna start with this gold this gold right here i do want to tip it more but this is cracked and it's just gonna keep pouring out so i'm just gonna take either one of these like i just call them like floofy eyeshadow brushes i don't know what they're actually called but we're gonna take one of these i'm gonna use this one um and we're gonna start packing in the gold to the corners and kind of probably like a third of the way through the eye I'd say that's pretty good for now. We're gonna go in, you know, back in and have to blend everything out and everything. Just nice circular strokes to kind of blend this out a little bit. All right, so far so good. I also always keep like, just like a makeup remover wipe on my lap because I like to just kind of um, clean off the brushes as I go. I find that I, if I don't, then the colors just kind of get mixed up and they get a little bit muddy. So the next color we're gonna use is this dark shimmery brown right here. Um, and that is going to go on the outside. So right now I'm skipping the middle and I'm going to use the same brush. I'm just going to go kind of along, kind of along my eye socket, if that makes sense. And for being a $10 palette, honestly, the colors are super pigmented, which is, don't tell my sister, I actually prefer Ulta to Sephora just because most of the time they do have, um, Better deals, their own brand is a little bit more affordable and I find that it still has really good quality. Then I'm gonna take a brush like this, which has a little, just a little bit more fluff to it, which is kind of nice. Um, and just gonna go in circles just to kind of blend this out a little bit. Don't want it to look too sharp of a line. It's also another reason why I keep a makeup remover, uh, remover wipe on my lap. It's just because I make mistakes, which is totally fine. And they're also fixable in Photoshop. But if there's certain things that I just don't have to go back and fix, because I can just fix them in person, then I'm going to do that instead. This is also why I don't... Um, put concealer and foundation on first because um, you can't really see but there's some just like little sh eyeshadow dots that are falling down just from blending and putting it on there so I always wait till the till the eyes are done to do that part just so that way I'm not wiping away foundation or wiping away concealer or basically just wasting product because like I said I'm weird about the things I want to spend money on so I'm just gonna tighten that line up a little bit and that's super easy right now because I don't have any makeup underneath. Now that we have the inside corners, now that we have the outside corners of the eyeshadow done, we're going to close this palette. We're done with this one for now. And we're going to use our Anastasia Beverly Hills self-made palette. This is a gift from my sister. I have no clue how much this thing costs. I don't want to know because it's probably more than it needs to be. But, oops. We're gonna go in and we're going to use the color Treasure right here. And we're actually gonna go into the middle of these two shades. So I usually, I mean, I don't usually do anything. I try to do a different makeup look every time I do one. That's not just like for going out or going to work or something. So I'm going to take um, a, a clean brush that doesn't have any dark colors on it. So again, just a nice little floofy boy here. And I'm just gonna go in the middle and lighten up that center. I do know that makeup looks, looks are also dependent on your eye shape. I don't know what y'all would consider mine, probably round. I just think that I have like just big round eyes. Um, but yeah, so then I'm gonna go back to the brush that I had before and just kind of blend out the darker colors back into the lighter one because we don't want just this like strip of light colored eyeshadow all of a sudden overpowering all the dark stuff. And with this, obviously you have to use your discretion. I'm gonna go back to my other palette and just kind of clean things up a little bit. So 
So the next thing that I do is I'll do like a very um, minimal winged liner. If you wanna know how to do a winged liner very well, I might not be your girl, but anyway, I'm going to use this Illa Mask uh, eyeliner. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure I got this at five below, which whatever. If it gets the job done, that's fine. I don't have pink eye, knock on wood, and I haven't gone blind, so it works. All I do is I actually set the tip of this pen flat against the um, corner of my eye and just swipe inward. So I don't want a huge wing, like I'm not going to go way out because I'm going to have those rhinestones there. So it's really just to create a little bit of depth. So just a very, very subtle liner on there just to kind of Create a little depth along the lash line. All right, for now, I think that's totally fine. Again, they're probably not perfectly even, but they get the job done. You know, I'm not out here trying to pretend to be like a super glam makeup artist, but okay. So we have our eyeshadow done, we have our liner done. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to, is going to be the rhinestones. So they come in all different sizes. So I'm going to be using the smallest size I can for along this line and then the second to smallest size is to go up the side here. So the first thing that I am going to do is let you know do not glue, do not super glue anything to your face. I feel like if you're watching this video you do probably know that but everything I do I use um, eyelash glue for in terms of sticking it to my face because in theory eyelash glue is already supposed to be something that's on your face. So it should be somewhat safe so they are super duper tiny um you can't really see it so i'm just going to dip the back of this in a little dollop of nail glue i have on my table and like anything with nail glue you want to give it a second to kind of like get sticky or dry a little bit before you just stick it onto your face or else it'll just kind of like move around I'm not gonna lie, I think it's like, there's pressure because I have the camera here. It's, I usually drop a lot more um, than this and I'm not trying to drink, jinx myself, but I'm just trying to be transparent that this usually takes me a lot longer to do than it is right now, but I'm thankful that I look so efficient. We have one of them done. It's not too hard really. I just kind of followed the line of the shape that I made earlier. Um, if you're not super familiar with like just putting in a lot of eye makeup or if you want to make it a little easier for yourself, I used to actually just tape these lines here just to make them super sharp. So when I was doing the eyeshadow part and then you don't have to um, worry about making sure you have a super straight line when you're done. All right, now that we have all the gems on, we have the eyeshadow done, I'm gonna actually move on to my eyebrows. And I'm going to use this Victoria's Secret Brow or Never. Um, it's just like eyebrow wax. Kind of helps them stand up a little bit. That's pretty trendy right now. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just brush them up quickly. Then I'm gonna go in with a super angled brush here. Um, and I'm going to use this color right here, um, I just need a little bit of a little bit of pigmentation in some of these spots that are a little bit thinner. And I actually have a kind of a red undertone to my hair, which you can't really see right now, but it works out pretty well just using like a brown eyeshadow or something to fill in my brows. I myself try to do it kind of like in little brush strokes or like little hair strokes, just so that way it's a little bit more natural looking. Um, I think that subconsciously just mimics what I do to people's eyebrows in Photoshop, which is making a bunch of little hairs, basically. All right, so now that the eyes are done, the eyebrows are done, we're gonna actually um, move on to concealer and foundation. So the concealer I use, so I'm not using the NARS, I actually love this um, Instant Age Rewind, like, 
eraser concealer. You can get this at any drugstore. They sell it at CVS, Walmart. I'm pretty sure it's like eight to ten bucks. The color I use is ivory because I have super pasty white skin. And I'm actually first going to just kind of hit these little red dots that I have on my face. And you can't really see it, but you can see the remnants of it. When I was in California, I went surfing and um, I scraped my face against the sand under the water and I had like sand burn on my face. So there's still a little bit of the skin that's um, recovering from that. So we'll just throw a little concealer on that bad boy. Get under our eyes here. I have like a crazy blue vein right here. I actually just covered it up, but um, my veins show through my face kind of very easily, which surprises me. So now that I have this concealer all over my face, I'm just gonna take my beauty blender. Again, I got this at five below. It was probably like $3. And I'm gonna spray it with just some um, hydrating setting spray. Um, this is the Pure Miracle Mist. I literally, this is probably the most expensive thing I own in terms of like my skincare routine. Um, but just adding a little bit moisture stops it from absorbing so much product. And then I'm just gonna go through really quick and just give like a light um, blend out because I am gonna go over this with foundation and a brush. So I will have opportunity to fix it up a little bit more. Be careful around the rhinestones just so that way you don't actually bump one off of your face. There are some people that if you want like full, full coverage, you can just do like all concealer on your face. I don't like to do it because I don't like how it feels. Um, I've had that done for like commercial or like film work and I feels really cakey. Not a huge fan. For my actual foundation, I use the Tarte Amazonian Clay foundation and fair sand again my skin is very white it's very pasty um i do have like a barely a, a little bit of color on it from my time in california but for the most part i can stick with this shade and we'll get through it um i really like this foundation because it's not super cakey and it's not super um just not super heavy i don't necessarily like i do have problems on my skin obviously just like everybody else but i don't have skin in terms of texture that needs a ton of coverage. So I like this, it's like medium coverage, can kind of cover up some of the redness in my skin without it being like caked onto my skin. So other beauty bloggers might kill me, but since this is just like a little little dot, I just squeeze this out and I actually just put it directly onto my skin because then my hand isn't absorbing any product. And um, and then I don't have to have makeup on my hand, which I guess is a weird thing, but I just like don't like to do that because I have a hard time getting any like it fully off of my hands. And since I'm shooting anyway, a lot of the time my hands are up or if I'm like posing or something and then you have like this weird spot that's just like nicely smooth and concealed and covered. So I do it directly into my face and then I use the uh, Morphe M444 brush. Um, it's just a flat foundation brush and I just kind of like it because it's pretty soft and I can kind of just rub all of the foundation in pretty easily with it and just kind of buff it out. Um, I don't do the beauty blender for my foundation, mostly just because I'm impatient and that takes a long time. All right, that's definitely helpful. As you can see, I do still have some, ooh. I do still have some problem spots, so I am gonna go in with the NARS. And this is actually a part that I will just use my fingers for, just because sometimes if you use like a, a beauty blender or a brush to brush out some of these um, spots I'm trying to cover. The brush or the beauty blender, it's hard to tell like how hard you're pushing down on where the concealer is. And so you end up just kind of sucking up with the product rather than it actually doing what you want it to do. So see how just using my finger just like made it way more, way more concealed than not using my finger. That's almost like it's not even there. Makeup is a miracle. So I'm gonna use the Anastasia Glow Kit. Again, this is not something I bought for myself. My mother gave this to me. I actually have a very, now that I'm saying all this, a very nice mom and sister who always give me nice makeup because they know that I'm not gonna buy it for myself. This is a little bit of a mess because I use it a ton, but I'm gonna go ahead and use hot sand and I'm just going to kind of contour um, along my cheekbones there. Mine are pretty easy to find, but a good way to do it. 
just fish kiss your lips and you can and then this brush it's a little bit um a little bit softer than i would typically like or recommend somehow i lost my like ang my contour like angle brush um so i've been using this one it does have a little bit of angle on the side so it works I'm also going to use the um, Too Faced Sweet Peach Glow little palette that I have here and I'm going to just use a little bit of this brown just to kind of darken up right here on my cheekbones. So then we'll take our puffier brush. This is what I use for blush. Um, and I'm just going to use the same palette and just kind of and then dab it onto the spots where I want it. For some reason the blush in this palette is like super pigmented as you can tell. So it's very easy to get color on with it i like to do like a little bit of a pink nose just because i think it's cute it makes me look like a little doll and ooh, it says it looks like i'm flipping everybody off so that's that i'm okay with i like a little bit of a lighter contour a little bit of a lighter um application of blush just because i do have such fair skin it is very it's very easy to look clownish with my my skin tone i think uh, maybe, maybe it's not that way to others, but I think it is. So that's all done. Highlight. I love a glow. Like, I love it. I'm obsessed. So I'm going to stick to a highlighter that has a little bit more of a gold hue to it as well. This is something that I got in an Ipsy bag probably like six months ago. This is a baked highlight powder in Do Me by Estate. I don't know if this is like a, a brand you can just go buy somewhere. I have no idea. I'm going to use this with um, just a standard fan brush. I like ones that are a little bit fluffier. It kind of seems like it, it spreads a little nicer. Just do this, and then I'm gonna hit my cheekbones with this. Oh yeah. And you can already tell the difference between here and here. This is just like a nice, subtle glow, which I love. I love to look dewy. I'm not blinding people in the cars next to me. I'm not wearing enough highlighter. Which is really a bummer with the masks because it's like really there's no place to even put highlighter unless you like want to put it right here which ooh, I do for like shoots and stuff but I don't really do for like every day every day wear I always hit my nose because I have a tiny nose so sometimes I feel like just hitting with some highlight will make it pop a little bit I also hit the top of my lips just to give that a little bit of dimension and my chin and then, like I said, I'm a little bit of a psycho and I love to glow, so I'm going to go in with my uh, Urban Decay Naked, what is this, Luminous Highlighter Palette. This is actually something I did buy, so maybe maybe I have bought a couple things that are a little bit more expensive. Um, but this one I got, it was like $30. I don't know if it's still $30, but I would highly recommend it. Like, look how beautiful this is, okay? Like, it's just, I had to buy it when I saw it, so... Just a quick little hit on either side with this because it is super, super sparkly and can totally overwhelm your entire face. Okay, so before I put on mascara, I'm gonna try to curl my lashes. Here's the deal. These things low-key scare me a lot. Um, so I'm always like so, so cautious with these because I'm just like nervous that I'm gonna pinch my skin or rip out my eyelashes or something. So. I'm not gonna lie, I don't love eyelash curlers, but I do see the importance of them, especially if you're not gonna wear falsies. <laughs> Did they curl? I have no idea. I'm just gonna go in and dust my lashes with this. So I don't like like a super thick spider lash, so I don't really use that much mascara. I also have pretty dark lashes as it is, and they're decently, I mean, they're decently long, so I don't find that I need to use a lot. Um, the trick to me seems to be, to be getting mascara on the ends over anything. So a lot of times I'll close my eyes and just dust the ends of my lashes as well before I go in and like really... Uh, All right, and there's one little part I forgot because I'm not used to doing makeup tutorials. Um, I just want to hit under my eye along here with just a little bit of that brown that I used on the outside corner just to kind of create a little bit more depth underneath the eye. I'm just going to use that same brush because hmm, I've already got the color on it. 
And the last thing I'm gonna do is just apply like a sparkly gloss. This again is something I got in an Ipsy bag. It's called Odessa Lip Polish. I'm gonna, just a super sparkly uh, lip gloss here. Ooh. I'm just gonna apply that. I don't have like lips that are made for overlining, so I don't typically wear like matte lipsticks or like matte lip glosses. This is the finished look. I'll do some close up shots. So, my goal for this is to create a look film a beauty tutorial just pretty up you know pretty quick one and then uh show you guys like a time lapse slash fast fast version of um, a full retouch process for me in a separate video which then i hopefully can break up into smaller videos so that way you can watch um step by step my retouching process because it is pretty extensive per photo um and i'll pop up some of the ones i just did of my friend mickey here per photo it takes me about an hour and a half to two hours to edit and there's anywhere between like 15 and 35 layers um so i just want to have a good process for like here's a fun part for my audience to watch where even if you're not interested in makeup you can at least watch me struggle doing it um second part is if you just want to kind of see the process and watch the magic for your eyes that'll be the time lapse the time lapse video and if you want to actually learn how to do it i'm going to be releasing them um, step by step. So like the first one I'll release is like how I go around about like spot retouching and that video will only cover that part but hopefully um, it's in depth enough for each of these parts that you can actually learn how I go about doing things. So thanks so much. I hope that my subscribers who are here for photography stuff don't leave me just because uh, I am doing something else. I have faith that you will be nice to me and not just leave me hanging there. Um, Follow me on social medias, you kind of know the drill, like and subscribe to this video, I'll link my social medias below and I will pop them up here. And if you have any questions, any comments, concerns, ideas for videos that you want me to do, makeup ideas you want me to try, because honestly if you send some crazy ones it might be funny to watch me try to do them. Um, just, you know, hit me up, send me a message, send me a DM. Um, I try to respond to all the comments and all the DMs and all those things in a pretty timely fashion. So hit me up, let me know what you're thinking, let me know what you want to know more about, and I will do my best. Thanks so much for watching, and hopefully I'll have the time lapse of this look, this beauty look, retouch, retouching? Hopefully I'll have the retouching time lapse of this look um, uploaded in the next few days. So have a good one, keep watching, check out my other videos. I don't know why I did this. Like this isn't this isn't me. I don't know who that is. I don't know what that is. Um okay, yep. Yeah. Uh bye.